One of the tools that we use in robotics is called Fisher Technics. These are similar to Legos, but quite a bit different at the same time. Um, instead of pushing together, they slide together. And they have lots of different ways of connecting and they're also motorized, just like some Legos are. Um, and you can program them, so they're very, very efficient. Um, they're made in Germany, and therefore they're just really nice. Um, also, they're expensive, so um, these are ones that I've collected over many years, and also some other teachers who have stopped using them, I've collected them from them so that I can continue to use them, even though some of these are kind of old, but they're still just as good as they used to be. Um, what I'm going to start out with is showing you the basic pieces. Um, these are the basic pieces right here. Um, you have this small one and then a big one. And if you look at them, they have channels in them that are circular. And then they have a nub on the end there that's uh, kind of like a dovetail. And that dovetail will slide in to the side of any of those other channels. It'll also slide in to the back so you can make them longer. Okay, so this is the standard piece. There are some variations. Um, there's the small piece that has a, a nub on both sides, like this one. Um, so know that if you need an extra nub instead of a open end, you can use one of these instead. Um, also, they have this one right here. That's basically the exact same, but with a little hole in the middle there. And that hole means you can you come in right here and then slide. So you can just kind of insert in the, in the middle right there. Um, also, that square will take an axle. So you can spin an axle inside there. Also, the it, an axle will go into any one of these channels like that. Okay, so there's lots of stuff you can do with just the basic pieces. All right, so there's that, that. All right, all these basic pieces, I'll put them aside. Um, they have specialty pieces that you can find that are, you know, have hinges on them. They have pieces that look the same, just have a, you know, a hole in the middle there that's specifically for the axle to go through. Um, they'll have a piece like this that if you put two axles through like this, you know, you can create like a slider on there, kind of a cool thing. They have a piece like this um, that can also hold an, hold an axle on it. Um, lot, lots of different pieces specifically for holding axles. Um, there's some more right here. Um, they have these angles and they have the angle written right on them. So this one is a 30 degree angle. And this one right here is just a smaller version of, you know, this double right here. So you can add something. Um, this one is just a single. So if you just need to add just a little bit, there it is. And this one right here is a different angle. So you can, kind of hard to see the angle sometimes, 60 and 30. So if you put them together, yeah, you can get all sorts of different things. Anyway, um, what else? Oh, here's another one. So if you want to like make an angle and it's, okay. there's lots of other pieces that I didn't grab, but you can see how, you know, each one of these has a specific purpose that you can probably figure out just by looking at it. Okay, I want to attach something and, you know, add an angle. Here's one that's also another hinge. So there's lots of different ways to attach these together, which is really cool. Um, okay, what else? Oh, there's also little add-ons. 
So there's this little tiny piece right here that can easily get lost, so be careful. And you can put it on the end here to add nubs. So I don't see why you would do that because you could just get a piece that already has one on it. But there's also sometimes they get stuck. But I just put it on the edge of the table and use the edge of the table to, to push it out. And it comes right up. So don't break your fingernails off on them. Anyway, so there's that. But I like to use these in the side mainly. So if I need to add you know, something to attach to the side like that, that's when I use these mainly. So lots of cool stuff. Um, let's keep putting things up there as we go through them. Here's a little spring. You know, and you just, again, just slide it in. And it'll attach easily. Just like that. And what's cool is that you won't be able to pull it off. You know, it stays on there. With Legos, you'd be, you wouldn't want to pull on it. But with this, you can. All right, so there's that one. Uh, we also have this right here, which is a gear or a rack gear. Um, and that goes in there just like that really easily. We'll come back to that later. Um, let's see. There's these, which also have the nub and a slot right there. But they also have this very interesting shape hole in them. And that is for one of these two pieces. Um, and what they do is they can they go through and I also have this blue piece right here. This blue piece is for people with big fingers like me that can't get them in here. If I wanna just go through like this, and if I wanna attach another, another one, you can see how it can go through. And then all I have to do is give it a, a quarter turn like that. And then I can, so as long as you keep it from turning, you can angle angle the other piece how you want. So you can attach these together however you want, like that, and build you know really cool structures. And yeah, there's all sorts of different sizes of these and lengths of these that you can use to build with. Um, the longer one is if you want to go through more than just two. So you can just uh, keep attaching more and more things together. All right. And again, this is just a little wrench to hold it. So you're, you know, those of us with bigger fingers can still manipulate them. All right. Um, okay. Ooh, here's this piece right here. Um, this would be another similar add on, um, as this right here, but instead of the, the nub, you give it, a like a big, long thing like this. So that's if you wanted to make something really strong and attach something side by side like this. So that, that works really handy. And you can use it for like, you want to adjust something. So if you want to like be able to adjust how high something is precisely, that would be a good way to do that. And you could make fine adjustments. All right, next. See here. I got those. Oh, here's another thing you can do with this. So this right here can also fit inside, inside down, inside one of those. So you can attach one of these on here really easily. And once it's on there, this can spin and you can then attach it to something else. Really nice. And then just slide it back out again. All right, so there's that. Um, you, know, you know, springs, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, these are the axles right here. Here's an axle with a gear on it. 
Uh, you don't take these off, they're press fit on there. Um, <clears throat> sometimes students take them off, um, but don't. <laughs> anyway, um, so I got some axles here. Let's uh, play with those a little bit. Let's see. Oh, first of all, I have like a bunch of different of these things. Um, there's three of three different kinds. There's, you know, different lengths of these. And then there's also these here. What these do is once they're on the axle and they're kind of hard to get on there, but they're mainly there to keep the axle from sliding. So once it's in there, you know, it's kind of like a, just a stopper for it. So if you don't want the axle sliding out, it's, it's just a stop like that. And all of these do the exact same thing. It's just they just look different. So whichever one you grab, I don't care. Um, obviously, you know, this one's going to have a little bit more grip to it because it's wider. There's that's what those are for. Um, um, let's see. There's these again, just basic pieces that you can use to create platforms and stuff. And they just slide right in to the other pieces or you can use these right here okay all right more coming let's see all right now here's one of the coolest parts of fisher techniques it's the collet system uh, if you don't know what a collet is let me show you it's basically um see how there's a taper to that it's a tapered um hole um well, shaft with the hole in it. The hole isn't tapered, but the outside is tapered, and it's also cut. There's two cuts in this one. Um, so these two can flex. See how they can close up like this? So as I tighten it into this, what's going to happen is it closes them up. Now, you don't want to tighten it up while well, it's just empty. You want to have something in it, okay, like the axle. And then once the axle is in there, as we tighten it, it's going to make it so that it's going to pinch down really hard on the axle and it won't come off. Okay, it's one of the best ways to attach something to a shaft. So I like it a lot. Now what's really cool is that all of these right here, boom, 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 boom. Boom. So all of those, if you look at what's inside of them, those teeth, those match up with this in the collet. Okay. So what you do is you put one of these on either side of whatever you're wanting to attach, either a, you know, pulley, a gear or a tire, or whatever you want. Um, there's another thing on here. Oh, this right here, a cam. There's lots of stuff that have that whole pattern to them. And all you have to do is put one of these on each side, put your axle in there, and then just tighten it down. And it holds it in there really easy. It's on there really tight. All right. So I'm not going to show you that for every single one of those, but I'm just showing you that there's a lot of, lot of them that do it. So there's that. Um, so that's one type of collet right there. There's another one that's really small. It looks like this, okay? And it can go into one of these. And as you tighten down, it'll do the exact same thing inside. Um, these, and so this can be used on, on this right here. So you can add something like this. And as this turns, it would turn one of these like that. Remember that? Okay. Next would be this right here is a, a universal joint. Put two in there, tighten it down, and you could turn something. Just tighten here. You could turn something from an angle like that. Really nice. Next. Okay, um, there's these, there's chain 
and conveyor belt like platforms that you can do. So first you'd have to, I have this chain and it's, it comes all like this and it's super tiny. You have to put them together link by link. It's insanely just crazy, annoying and long, you know, it takes a long time to slowly build a chain. Uh, but you know, there are certain, certain students that like taking the time to do that. Uh, but these chains work perfectly going around these. Okay. And also you can make, you know, like tank tracks and stuff out of them. So those, those put together can make all sorts of stuff. All right, let's see. Okay, so there's this right here. It has a screw in there, and that would be something that would go on, on this right here. Okay, really, uh, that's not very long, but so if you were to put that on there, they make these pieces that don't have anything on either side. And you could put that on there, and they join together and makes it so it's much longer. So you could have something attached to there, and as you as you turn the axle, um, it would move this back and forth. It's kind of like inside your CD player. It's called a lead screw. All right, so that's kind of fun. Now, so I talked about all this. Now we're getting to the good stuff. All right. Ooh, there is this one right here. So these are rare. I don't have very many of these. But if you notice, the end is circular so that if you do attach it to something, um, it can turn. But if you do one of these ones that, you know, it's square on the end, these ones, once they're in, they don't want to turn. Okay. Yeah, these are, I don't have very many of these. These are hard to find. All right. Okay. Um, motors. This is what the motors look like. Okay. And they're powered here. Um, they actually have three, three different places you can plug into. Come on, focus. So yeah. There's one on the side, one on the top and one on the end. You got to put a plug, you know, one on one side and then one on the other side that goes to the controller. Okay. Um, so that's the motor. Now there's a couple of ways you can attach the motor to different gears. Okay. So the first one I'm going to show you is this one. Um, and if you look at it, it's got these channels right here and you also have these nubs here. Now, when you put this in here, the best way to put it in is so that the power is on top, not on bottom. And it goes down in there. And if you look really closely, there's a ton of gearing here. So, and that needs to engage with the gears down below. Okay. And this has this little tiny gear right here that crawls along these grooves. Now, I won't be able to get it on there because the motor is holding it back. So if I lift up the motor just a smidge, now it should be able to move. There we go. So it's moving back and forth like that. But yeah, as soon as I put the motor down, it's going to lock it and I won't be able to move it. It's stuck. Um, and these, you can get multiple and you can put them together like this. And you can create a whole elevator or a system that moves things back and forth. Okay. So super simple linear uh, movement with just two pieces. Um, and you can take those and you can put them with, you know, you can build it with structure, of course. And let me just show you this real quick. There should be a switch around here. There we go. This is a switch that you can wire to the controller as well. So if you were to put a switch on here and wire it, when this comes along, it's made so it just perfectly pushes that button. 
So you can say go forward till you hit this button and then go backwards till you hit a, a different button back here. All right. So it's really easy to, to make uh, something that goes just back and forth and just goes between two buttons. You never want to use time. You don't want to say go forward for one second and then go backwards for one second because if you did that, um, just due to um, variations in the gears and stuff like that, it would slowly work its way more to one side than the other, even if you have the exact same amount of time. So actual physical buttons are much better than using time in any program. All right. Okay, so next. So that's this gearbox. There is another gearbox, and this one has a lot more stuff to it. It's smaller, but it, it attaches, again, the exact same way. It just slides down on top of it. And once it's engaged, it's not going to move until you actually power it. But if you do want to move it, you can just you know, move it up just a little bit so it disengages from the screw right here. All right, now... Um, first one I'm going to show you is this one right here. So you can take this and now sometimes students don't know what side to put it on, but there's this gear right here and there's gears already on the outside. So you want to put it in here in a way that this, this gear meshes with those gears. So as it turns, it goes. Okay, there's all sorts of stuff you can do with this. Um, so you can attach to it using, let's see, do this right here. Do something like that. Voila, you have a gear on there like that. Or you could just hook up a, a, a wheel right onto it. Um, or another gear, anything. So as long as you can fit it on here, you're, you're good to go. But you could have done that on with the other collet. Um, so that's, that's that one right there. So that's easily to attach that. The other thing that you can do is to grab one of these. I don't have very many of these, but I, I think about maybe five of these and they attach the exact same way. They go in there and they have this little uh, clip like that. And I have a couple of gears that have that. I have this one right here. And so that would just snap on like that and voila, you have it. And you can even uh, snap more axles onto it and stuff. You know, you can have another thing on here and have all sorts of stuff uh, running off of one motor. Okay. Now, these motors are very weak, though. So, a lot of times um, you want to gear it down a lot. And the easiest way to gear it down is to have something like this on there. And if you have this powering something like this, then that'd be, give you a lot more strength. It'd be slower, but it'd be stronger, you know, as far as gearing it. And let's see, there's also this right here that we could have had this one on, you know, moving it back and forth. Okay, but that's not gonna be as strong as this one with the gear on this, moving back and forth. These are a lot stronger. Again, slower, but stronger. Okay, so be careful about uh, going for speed, be, you know, because it's going to be a lot slower. All right, now, um, I'm not going to show you any programming yet, but I'm going to show you some of the things that you can program, you know, besides, you know, the motor and the switch. This is a electromagnet. So if you power this bad boy up, it can pick up anything metal. Okay, as long as it's you know, magnetic metal. It won't pick up aluminum, but it will pick up steel. Uh, this right here is a sensor. So this will detect how bright the light is. So you can have something happen when it gets dark or if it gets light 
or if you, you want to see when a part goes by, it will detect, you know, the shadow of something. Um, this is just a regular old light, and they make different covers for the light, you know, red, green, and yellow, so you can make a stoplight, and these just clip right over the top, just like that. Anyway, yeah, it's not coming off that easy, so I'll leave it on. Um, this is a very annoying buzzer. Uh, don't use those unless you really want to be annoying. Um, this is a potentiometer. Um, it can only turn like 180 degrees. So if you put something on here and you want to know where it is, but you have something that just moves 180 degrees, and this will sense exactly where it is on there which is kind of cool. So if you had like some sort of robot that, you know, just pick in place and went here to here and that was it, uh, this would be able to give feedback as to exactly where it is. Uh, this right here is a magnet sensor. So if a magnet gear gets nearby, it's called a reed switch. Um, if a magnet is nearby, it connects two wires inside of there and completes the circuit. So it will say, oh, there's a magnet nearby. Um, this right here is a solenoid valve. It goes with our air pistons. This actually has pneumatics too. So we can use pistons with air pressure. And I have like a an aquarium pump that I'll use to fill it, fill um, you know chambers with air. And then this by using this and some hoses. Can you know if you push air into here, it'll push it up this way, and if you push air down into this one, it'll push it this way. So you can have a pneumatically controlled uh, robot, but of course you have to have onboard compressed air. Anyway, so lots of different stuff. So this is just you know the tip of the iceberg as far as like all the pieces and stuff that I have. I have you know different sizes of things, but if you watch this and know how just these basic pieces work, you can basically figure out anything else in the kit. So um, the whole objective is to have fun and to, to build things, but it's always easier to be able to do that once you know how they go together. So.